first of all, what type of bag should I use or carry? And this is a great question because we're always toting stuff around. And you wanna start with, what do you need? Are you trying to haul lots of things, just a few things? Are you looking for a purse? And you wanna remember with hypermobility, it's all about symmetry. So you want things to be equal, you want them to be close to your body, and you wanna make it as easy on you as possible. So to start, I brought in a whole bunch of examples. So one is a backpack. Now, you do not want to do the backpack on one shoulder. If you're going to use a backpack, which is a great way to carry more and heavier things, you want to do both shoulders and have it fairly snug so that way it stays upright and nice and even. Now, what you want to watch for is if you can find a backpack that actually has a waist strap, that's even better because then you can help support some of that weight on your pelvis and it takes off the extra pull onto your shoulders and your neck. But you do wanna make sure that your straps are fairly even. Now, the thing about doing the one arm or one shoulder thing, which you'll see in purses also, is it does two things. One, it tends to pull on one side, which is hard for hypermobility. The other thing is that you tend to fight against it, so you end up pulling that shoulder up and most people with hypermobility, our shoulders kind of drop down, so things tend to slide off in the first place. So again, when you've got one side that's working really hard, it's gonna aggravate your neck, shoulder, and give you more problems. So you're wanting to keep that equal. So backpacks, try and do two straps, kind of nice and even. <clears throat> now you can also do um, a shoulder bag. This is one that I've used, been on for years. And to do that, you wanna have it crossbody. And again, it's about evening out that weight. So you're gonna have the weight behind you. Notice I don't have it on my side because then that's gonna pull me this way. But when I shift it and now have it, so it's resting more on my pelvis and the strain is coming across my body, now I'm more stable and I can be more even. This is not going to be the most comfortable thing for everyone, but it shows you what another option is if you're like, I don't like backpacks and they don't work well for me. So then we move on to purses. Now you have purses kind of that are like smaller kind of clutch bags. And if you have something like that, a couple of things. One, make sure that they are light. Don't load it up, use just what you need, and you're gonna wanna switch hands so that as you're using it, carrying it with you, you wanna try and keep it even by going back and forth. Another option is if you've got a longer style purse, same thing, you wanna do that cross body and have it so that it's more kind of off that hip. Now, the lighter things are, the less specific you have to be about position. The heavier they are, the more you wanna be very careful about length and where it should be. So, you want it to kind of end more along your pelvis area. You don't want it to be short enough to where it's like right underneath your, um, underneath your rib cage because that'll cause you to shift. Third option, and this is um, another one that I tend to use. Forget which way it goes. Again, it's a crossbody one, um, and it just helps to support that weight throughout your whole back, rather than trying to anchor something on one side. And it works really well um, for longer days, longer distances, things that you have to be a little more careful about. Now, regardless of which type of option you use, less is more. And it's one of the things I struggle with the most, but when you load something up to where your purse is now 19 pounds and you're trying to haul that around, you wanna make sure that you absolutely need all of that weight. And if not, leave things at home. Be strategic about where you have things and try not to carry more with you than what you absolutely need to because it is harder on your body.